Hello, my name is Lillian Chin, and I'm here to present my paper on multiplex manipulation. So this idea of multimodal grasping, that it's not just one grasping motif that you should use in order to pick up an object, is becoming steadily more popular in the robotics community. And we can really see this if we look at the results of the Amazon Picking and Amazon Robotics Challenge. After the first Amazon Picking Challenge, 50% of teams surveyed wished that they had incorporated suction instead of just doing a traditional rigid gripper design. And if we look at the winners of the um, Picking and Robotics Challenge, we see this trend sort of continue. Most uh, notably in 2016, the second challenge, um, Team Delft used a combination suction pinch mechanism. Um, and then in 2017, sort of the winners from there, um, either used suction and parallel plate as totally distinct objects or in a more integrated approach as we see from the MIT Princeton team. So despite the popularity of multimodal grasping, we sort of see an issue where it's not as fully integrated as it could be. So we see this in some of these robots. For example, right hand robotics is using a combination um, rigid gripper as well as suction, but it primarily uses suction in order to pick up objects, shooting that out and only using the rigid components to steady the object within its grasp. Alternatively, we can see um, this paper from Mahler et al., where uh, different policies for different grasping modes is investigated. And although a significant amount of objects are being able to be picked up, it still treats the two grasp modes as completely different. It seems that if we want to get the full benefit of using these different um, grasping motifs, we need a more integrated design and a more integrated approach. So in this paper, we present sort of this idea. Rather than only thinking of multimodal grasping as being a binary or sequential selection of these two modes, use one or the other, we instead propose multiplex manipulation. Multiplex manipulations um, suggest that rather than choosing one mode over another, what if we integrate modes into a single package? If by combining these two approaches, as you can see in the video, we're able to pick up thin objects by sort of um, combining suction, parallel, and soft grasping in new and different ways to allow us to do much more complex manipulation. So in this paper, um, I will be introducing sort of our first attempt at getting multiplex manipulation. So you can see here our gripper is able to do soft bending fingers, traditional soft robotics, uh, a rigid parallel plate grasp, as well as a suction with those on the end. So this is really attractive because not only do we get the benefits of all three um, manipulation motifs, but by combining them into a single package, we're actually able to do more things, as well as take many of the benefits of manipulation seen if we use compliant grippers. So now let's break down the design of our gripper a little bit more. The key point of this gripper relies on handed shearing auxetics. So what this is, is that um, it sort of is a new approach to auxetic materials. Normally when you pull on a conventional material like a rubber band, uh, you expect it to get skinnier. However, for sex materials, when you pull on it, it gets thicker. It has a negative Poisson's ratio. So what we were able to do is we were able to sort of take a new spin on this concept, um, pairing twisting with extension based on the geometric pattern that we see. So this allows us that as we sort of pull on an object or twist it, it gets this natural extension. So this is really nice because it allows us to use traditional motors and electrical actuation to get many of the benefits of soft since this solely relies on the geometric pattern and we don't need to worry about uh, materials or other things like that. Um, we can take this concept of having the geometric properties change the um, metamaterial properties by adding a constraint layer. So you can see in the top right that if we add um, a constraint onto it, we get sort of traditional soft finger bending, which makes this perfect for our application. We also notice that since this is material agnostic and we can use these tubes in order to uh, drive the motion, um, they are hollow and so we can feed cables and other tubing through this. So using these fingers as sort of the basis of our platform, we now can create a gripper out of this. So if you look at my cursor, looking at section A, uh, we see here that we have one finger unit where we're pairing two um, handed shearing auxetics together in order to create a soft finger. We put each of these fingers on a carriage um, that then rides on a linear rail. As you can see on B, it sort of drives it back and forth, which allows that parallel motion. We also take advantage of the hollowness of the finger in order to feed suction tubing through the system. And if we look at section C, the tubing and cable come out and are fed down to a control center. 
Um, we also have a few quality of life improvements to, in order to increase the friction of our grasp ability. Um, so for example, you can see this rubber skin here as well as the soft foam. And then also we have a rigid cable connected to a limit switch. And that allows us to sort of detect uh, when the two carriages are collided in with each other. You can imagine replacing this with an encoder if, if you don't like the limit switch design. So to go and investigate these different motifs, um, we have one suction where you we bring the fingers close together in order to have the suction cups over the graspable area. Um, we have parallel jaw, which again, we drive the fingers until they close and we detect this by the limit switch uh, triggering. And then finally, we have this soft finger grasp. In order to distinguish it from the parallel jaw, um, we drive the fingers until they are just barely applying a lateral force to the object. Although we do this manually in the paper, you can imagine having a force sensor at the end um, rather than a limit switch to just detect when you're starting to have force clamping them together. Once it detects that we have just about touching the object, we bend the fingers inward. Um, and so we're only relying on the pinching motion of the soft fingers to do this grasp. Again, we do this in order to sort of distinguish the different modes between parallel jaw and soft finger grasping, so we can better identify uh, how, which grasping mode is responsible for what. So now um, let's characterize our gripper. So here we see that the most powerful um, grasping motif is suction by far. This is because um, we sort of, if we can get a good seal on the suction cup, everything is quite strong. We note that soft grasping is the weakest, especially compared to parallel jaw, and this is sort of as expected because the compliance of the fingers move out of the way and don't get necessarily give us the strongest lateral force. Meanwhile, we also see that as we go further and further into the gripper, uh, gripper's fingers, um, we get a stronger parallel jaw force, um, making the most if we use this rigid portion as well as the whole area of the finger. We also note by doing some Instron tests on different objects that uh, we do in fact see a benefit if we combine the soft grasping with the parallel one. So as you can see here, um, we go from the very low force for the soft grasping motif um, to a much stronger one when both parallel and soft are combined. We do note that there is some variation um, based on the object. So we get a much larger benefit for sphere because we're able to more closely wrap around the object and bend inwards than we do for step or cylinder. So now doing some grasping tests with this, out of the 75 objects that we tested, 88% were graspable. We had difficulty with heavier objects such as the dumbbells, as well as objects that required more of a pinch uh, grasp like the pen and the marker. Um, so breaking down the graft objects even further, um, we see that uh, for the easiest objects for us to grasp across all of the three kinds of modes were objects that had a smooth, flat surface that made it easy for the suction to grab, as well as any objects that had sort of like a power grasp ability that made it easier for the soft fingers as well as the par parallel jaw grasping modes. Um, we also saw that uh, there were some grasps that um, some objects that were easier to grasp with one mode rather than the other, but the objects that we really want to focus on are the ones that um, could only be grasped if you used a combination of two modes, because that's really where we see um, the benefit of multiplex manipulation come into being. So if we look at sort of like what objects were able to do it, uh, for example, for this guinea pig plushie, we can see that um, with just soft grasping or parallel grasping alone, alone, we're not able to get sort of the force needed or as well as the curling underneath of the object to get a really secure grip. So once we use the combination of both techniques, we're actually able to grab an object that we couldn't with either mode. Similarly with the soft foam, we weren't able to grasp it with just suction alone because the surface was much rougher than like is ideal for a suction cup. We also weren't able to grab it with a parallel grab because again, we couldn't really create enough lateral force to pinch it. But by combining the two, um, we were able to sort of um, nudge the fabric into a better graspability position for the suction. So it's this combined pinching as well as suction action that lets us grab this object. Finally, again, the most promising area for multiplex manipulation is doing basic in-hand manipulation. Thin plate objects are notoriously difficult for robots to grasp, but here you can see that we can not only use the suction in order to grab 
um, this plate from flat. But we can also use the combination of our soft fingers to sort of bend inwards, as well as the parallel plate to sort of snap it into place. And we now have a more manipulable um, orientation. For example, we could use this for loading dishes into a dish rack or similar things. So that was my talk. Um, I hope that you are convinced that multiplex manipulation is a new and potentially um, great new field of exploration. And I look forward to you emailing me or um, chatting with me at the poster session if you have any questions. Thank you.